And so we're just basically converting the podcast app into a form of an inbox. We like to say that it's an inbox where you could find all your content and what's cool. And, you know, the more we talk to more of our users who are kind of all in on audio, I mean, building their entire businesses in audio, like that's how they deliver. They're like, my people know, and they only have to go to one place. And that's where I am. And the whole feed is filled up with her course content, her free content, her master classes, her webinars. Hi there, and welcome to Share, Strategize, and Shine. I'm your host, Caroline Hull, a podcast strategist and CEO of Wild Home Podcasting. I've built my entire career through podcasts by sharing my experience, using strategic systems, and shining a light on the power of podcasting. If you are looking to cultivate leads for your membership, group program, or consulting services, I'm here to help you create a holistic and integrative podcast strategy that'll let your business thrive. Let's dive in. Hello, and welcome back to Share Strategize and Shine. Today, we're talking about something that I think is going to become more and more and more important, not only in the podcast world, but marketing as well. And that is private podcast. So a private podcast is a podcast that is not available to the public, right? Ergo, it's private. So how can you use a private podcast and what are some of the best ways to get started if it's something that you're interested in? Today, I'm talking to Lindsay Padilla of Hello Audio. She is an ex-community college professor who accidentally started a business while on the tenure track. Now, she's a CEO and co-founder of Hello Audio Software, which takes your content and creates private audio feeds to make learning on the go so much easier for your people. And you're going to love her story about how they started Hello Audio and some of the things that they went through to create this amazing platform for private podcasts. So on this episode, we're going to do just that. We're going to talk about her story. We're also going to talk about private podcasts in general, why you should think about having them as a part of your business and your courses, memberships, offers, those kinds of things, and then how to get started. So if you've been thinking like me (laughs) that you need to start some private podcasts for some things in your business, this is a really great episode to get you on the right track. Let's dive in. Hi, Lindsay. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm really excited to be here. Always love coming and talking about private podcasts. I mean, I'm super excited to dive into this with you because I've, all my listeners know, I'm always looking for the next thing I want to do with my podcast. And I've kind of dabbled in private podcasts over the years, but I've got some ideas up my sleeves. And so it just seemed like a good time to have the conversation not only for my sake, but just for everyone else, because I think there's a lot of value to private podcasts, which we're going to dive into today. So before we do that, can you just introduce yourself and tell everyone a little bit about who you are and what you do? Sure. Yeah. And I'm, I'm loving the timing of this episode. We can, we can make 2024 the, the year of private yeah, podcasts. let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. Um, cool. So I always have like a long story and a short story. I'll give you maybe the medium length Perfect. One. Love it. Yeah. um, So I was a past college professor in a previous life. I taught community college. I taught sociology. And I left that when I accidentally started an online business. And that was its own journey. But I uh, uh, essentially fell into helping other online business owners teach because there was a lot of stuff about marketing and creating courses, but not a lot about actually teaching. And that was perfect in my wheelhouse. I taught online at my community college. Um, a, a big portion of my sections were online. So that was perfect. I did that for a few years. And in, gosh, early 2019, I realized that there was this thing called private podcasting that was very, very new. And I was seeing it pop up in some Facebook groups where people were talking about memberships and delivering their members audio files and, and husbands writing code to be able to do that. And I was like, it immediately when I saw the option of having a course be audio only or audio as a supplement to a video, I was like, I knew the teacher in me was like, that's what people need. Even though I had been telling people, put an MP3 file <laughs> under every video to hit all the learners. And the reality was that was not how people use their phones right? right? Um, or, or like to consume audio. So it wasn't really until I had my first, I had enrolled in my first course that was 
a great course. The teacher is more of like a lecturer type orator. And she just had videos of her YouTube, like talking to the camera. And I had to log into some weird site to do it. And I, I was just like, I just like listening to her. She was inspirational. And I'm like, why is this not a podcast? Yeah. And so once I kind of put those two things together, I had my husband, Derek, who's head of product at Hello Audio, but he also is like a little techie, but like not an engineer, like an engineer or anything by trade. He was a physicist, also a community college teacher. Oh my gosh. And <laughs> I had him look at it and I was like, should we build this? And so he knew enough to kind of see what was out there. It took him three or four months. He's, he's a researcher. And the second he came back and told me and is like, we have to build it. The other podcast companies that are coming out with private podcasting are never going to make it easy to put a course in a podcast. And, and that happened in August. And I made a Facebook post that was like, told people, I was like, hey, do you wish your favorite courses were in a podcast and you could just binge it? And people were like, Yes. 400 comments later, $30,000 in lifetime licenses. That's how we launched Hello Audio. We took the year of 2020 to build it, um, you know, found a developer and uh, yeah, launched and had subscriptions, people paying us in November 2020. So coming up on our third year of, of being in business. Okay. I have so much to say about this. <laughs> <laughs> first of all, first of all, that is amazing. I don't know why it feels like to me. So I've been podcasting for 10 years now. It feels mm -hmm. like to me, like you've been around longer. Oh, that's so, funny. But, yeah. I, no. but it's funny because I also remember when you launched Hello Audio, uh, because I was paying very close attention because I was like, wait a minute. Um, this is going to be really neat. So that's that's so funny. Um, that what a wild ride from being professors yeah. and a scientist. It sounds like, uh, to to this. So, what made you? I mean, you kind of said it when you were telling the story, but I'd love if you dig in a little bit deeper. What made you say private podcast and hello audio? Like this is what we want to throw everything into. It, that was a journey. I'm not going to say it was like the second I knew, but you know, if you've been in business long enough and especially for yourself, I think you have those moments where you're like, I'm on to something yeah. and you have that, that gut feeling and, you know, making a post like that, being in business three or four years in my own like personal brand and my own consulting and stuff and the popularity of it, I just knew it was good. Mm -hmm. What I didn't know clearly was how to build a software company. So <laughs> I knew that there was going to take some learning and I'm not going to lie, the beginning of that, gosh, the end of that year into 2020, um, we were actually debating. I had, I had talked to a couple mentors. I had talked to people I trust. I talked to somebody pretty big and deep in podcasting, Harry Duran, who I think actually um, was a partner, part of like Squadcast possibly. Either way, I talked to some people that I know pretty well in the industry and they were like, well, you don't have to build it from scratch. What if you partnered with somebody and shared with them how you see this use case like developing in this group of, you know, this essentially this, uh, what's the word, like niche that right. could use it in this way. Because the reason why we knew we had to build it initially, or like it had to be created was podcast hosting companies are built for podcasters. And not all creators are podcasters. I think all podcasters are creators, right? But they're not all um, not all creators are podcasters. Yeah. They have other mediums that they choose to create right. on. And so we we knew as creators and that we would have different features and needs and way that it would be set up. So all that to be said, we actually worked with Glow FM. I we almost I was with um, who they were bought by Libsyn yep. in 2021, I think. Um, we were working with them. Amira was amazing. She's a great CEO. I was meeting with her pretty regularly, telling her about this use case. And her her company as a startup was in this mode of like trying to figure out exactly what route they wanted to take. And so, you know, those talks lasted a while. And I look back at that time as somebody who really didn't had an imposter syndrome, I yeah. guess, of thinking that I, who, you know, who am I to create a software company? I, I know nothing about it. But we had a lifetime, so more of the story about how it transpired. We were pretty much going to work with Glow. We didn't know what the relationship would be like. She had to talk to her board, so it was taking a long time. We had a lifetime, uh, a lifetime license user reach out in early February of 2020 and say, when's this going to get built? I need, I need it, like, because we were manually doing it for people. Wow. We were essentially creating feeds and then hiding the RSS from, like, to be able to be found. Yeah. 
and which was fine to do for people that helped us get this thing off the ground. But at the end, we knew we had to do software or give them the place to do it. Right. And she's like, well, I could help you build it. Long story short, we worked together for a couple months, didn't work out with her. But either way, she made me realize like it was possible. Um, and that's actually what made us step away from the talks with Glow FM and just like actually decide to build it when someone came forward and said, I could help you develop yeah. it. Yeah didn't turn out to be the best relationship. And she ended up taking the code and building her own product. But that's a whole other uh, <laughs> conversation we don't need to get into. The startup world is crazy. It but is. either way, like I'm grateful for that experience because it just made me build it and realize that we were the people that had to build it. Like no one else was going to build it Yeah, in that, in that way. What a lesson, I think, too, just on like taking risks and, you mm. know, following the ideas that you have and seeing where they lead. And like, I love how you were open to collaboration. And that those collaborations actually led you to realizing what you needed to do in the end. So I think there's a lot of power in your story just about, like you said, startups, but business in general and just what we all go through. hundred percent. And I, and, and I'll say this too. I had a lot more confidence being several years in business, oh, yeah. like to be able to say, you know what I mean? Totally. And, and I think when the world shut down and all that stuff, then I decided to shut down my personal brand and go all in. So to answer your question about like, when did you decide yeah. this was going to be the thing? I didn't really know. It took several months, um, but eventually we came to that decision. Yeah, that's awesome. So for the listeners who are listening, and and you can jump in at any time if I'm describing this incorrectly, but what I love so much about Hello Audio, so it's a private podcast host, which is so great. Um, I love the link sharing. I think this is my favorite thing about it because I can share a link and then they can pick how they want to listen to it, first of all. But then you can also control who has access to the private podcast. So as you've been working in this area with private podcasts, what are some successful ways that you're seeing private podcasts being used by business owners? Yeah, that's the coolest part about doing this. When I first launched it, that Facebook post that I mentioned, yeah. It was called pod, it was called podcast your course. Like the original use case was turn your course into a podcast so people actually finish the content. Right. Boom. And then when you start to think like a marketer and realize you just kind of open this whole kind of can of worms, if you will. And I remember, I don't remember exactly how far after podcast your course. It was it was probably the day we came up with that name. I bought the domain to podcast everything. Podcast your book, podcast <laughs> your summit, podcast. And, and I still hang on to yeah. those things, even though we don't use it. But I remember the exact, um, we had a couple of margaritas. We were at a local ta ta taco shop in downtown San Diego. And my husband and I were like buying all of them. I and, love like, that. and I think it's whether or not you use those kind of domains, it's, it's more like, oh, this has a ton of use cases. Yeah. And to be fair, we came up with, you know, five or six. And those are, those are still probably our top, but our users have come up with even more, you know, unique ways of using it that I even had considered prior. Uh, things like podcasting your newsletter, you know, podcasting with your private client, um, your coaching calls. Um, what else? Yeah. So, I mean, I could go down a long list, but for the most part, we like to at Hello Audio talk about the two main features or like, I guess features isn't the right word, the two use cases in a business. And one is marketing. So right. that front end, how are you going to attract people? And the other is is in-house, right? Fulfillment, whether that's courses or one-on-one -on -one work or, you know, internal team stuff. And so we kind of put them in those two camps. And then when you think about it like that, then you can say, okay, cool. How can you use private podcast and marketing? Essentially, as, as far as we are concerned and what we've seen, almost any type of launch event yeah. or type of marketing event could be turned into audio because there's usually some delivery method, whether it's writing or video, right? And so you just look at it as another format. And I think that's what we didn't truly know what we were doing when we came up with this, where we're like, oh, we're, you know, welcoming people back to audio as a medium. It's not, it's not just podcasting. It's, right. Yeah. Podcasting is the app and the place that people already go to, but it's really just audio as a medium. Yeah. And I like to tell this story too of my grandmother when, you know, she knew I left teaching <laughs> She knew that I was doing this weird thing online, but, and she never truly understood what that was. She's like, I don't know how you left a professional gig like that, but cool. Like you do to you, Lindsay. 
And then I built this software company and I was explaining it to her and she doesn't get podcasts. She, she's a little older, um, knew that they were popular. Lots of her friends listened to stuff, um, knew where it was on her phone, but personally didn't know how to subscribe or anything. And I was like, yeah, so we do podcast hosts. She's like, okay, I, I think I get podcasts. And then she asked some other questions and I was like, well, you know, we take people's courses that are video courses and we put them in a podcast app so they can listen. And she's like, oh, you know, that's how I became a realtor was books on tape. And I was uh, like, yeah. exactly. So I'm like, it has been around forever. Right. Um, it's just podcasting at, and these players, you know, that we have on our phones. That's the medium that people are getting or the way that people are getting uh, the episodes or the or the audio. And so we're just basically converting the podcast app into a form of an inbox. We like to say that it's an inbox where you could, right, um, find all your content. And what's cool, and, you know, the more we talk to more of our users who are kind of all in on audio, I mean, building their entire businesses yeah. in audio, like that's how they deliver. They're like, my people know, and they only have to go to one place. And that's where I am. And the whole feed is filled up with her course content, wow. her free content, her master classes, her webinars. And she takes over a feed. And I was like, yep. And it, and the thing that is great about it that, again, we didn't really get is like, it's not about finding different logins or like, yeah. you don't have to log in. You don't have to like go to these different places. It's literally in one place. And so, yeah. So essentially to go from podcasts as a course or, or turning your course into podcasts to the whole gamut of basically any content that you deliver probably could also be in an audio format for folks who would prefer to listen in that way. I love that so much. You know, I hadn't even thought about the that possibility of when you do convert so much into audio and how that make that makes so much sense because then your people would be trained like that's how I receive the content and then it's all Correct. right there in one place. I will say I've I've been like listening to a lot of private podcasts lately, just checking them out, how they look, what, you know, what what they're putting into them. And it's been mm -hmm. really interesting for me to test this all out because I'm I'm a podcaster. I've done podcasts for years, but I really love consuming content that way as well. And, you know, I sign up for courses and they're video and I'm like, they're usually playing in the background over on my screen. I'm usually not watching it, you know? And I think the ones that I've really loved lately is I got a, a lead magnet that led into a membership and it was really neat because she dripped out the episodes. So it wasn't like you got all the episodes. It was like you subscribed and every day I would check to see if there was a new episode. Loved that. And then um, I've been seeing a lot of audio summit, which I'm very, yes. very interested in. Uh, loving that uh, because I just really am not a huge fan of the video summits. Like as a participant and as somebody who wants to speak in sure. summits, I'm like, no, thank you. But vi audio? <laughs> yes, please. Like I can do that. So those are kind of some two ways that I've I've seen recently newer kind of creative ways. And so I love mm -hmm. that you mentioned that because now my brain is just like spinning of how can I live in people's podcast apps as all audio. Yeah, take over the yeah. feed, as we like to say. I love that. Yeah, take over the yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you think, you know, with with podcasts, public podcasts and shows, there's a real emphasis on like production and um, how we're recording, how we're we're editing, all of that. Do you find that that still applies to private podcasts or is there a little bit more leeway, do you think? Yeah, I think that's a really good question and fair. Um, there's a couple ways I can come at this. The first is a lot of people are telling us that, you know, some people who have been scared about a public podcast because of that feeling and pressure of productivity or like productivity for weekly. Right. Um, you know, the type of a show and consistency, but also that production level that they start with a private podcast oh, interesting. and then it spins off to something public. And this might be somebody who's a little more, you know, scared of it. Um, but I think to your question about pr like production levels. Yeah. I mean, you know, the more saturated, I guess, podcast market is you, you do hear about shows that are super late, you know, super amazing and, and overproduced or whatever, I guess not over. I think there's a lot of pressure to go video right now within yeah. in the whole public podcasting yeah, space. Is. And so, yeah, I I think when you go private, the, you know, the content is really important. I think it's really important in both avenues. I think public podcasts, obviously, it's really important, too. But with private, someone's kind of raising their hand. Right. right. And I think with private podcasts, they tend to be very focused topics. 
So this is also what a lot of people love about private podcasts is it's like, oh, I'll sign up for this lead magnet because it solves this problem. For the creator, you know, a short three to five episode that gets that, you know, yeah. person listener from A to B is a really valuable piece mm -hmm. of content. And so when it comes to like, should that be well produced? I think, I think I like to think about it from the creator's perspective. Podcasts are so much easier to get out than video. Um, anything video. Yeah. And I would argue even anything, even a PDF is hard to get out because you have to like make it look a certain way where a private podcast is like you and a mic and that's it. Mm. And what's cool about that is the cre the asset creation is so much faster. And so we like to say that the ROI for getting something out there as a creator and into the hands of your people, audio is unbeatable um, because of that. And so when you think about it from that perspective, getting it out there is really the most important thing. Yeah. And then audio ends up being easier to edit and update and change. And so you want to update an intro, you want to add music. Now you have a hundred people that have raised their hand and said, I like this. So now you as a creator can start to wow. invest some time into it. Could you make them a little bit tighter? Could you, yeah, add an intro and outro, a little, whatever they call those transition noises in podcasting, you know, could you make it like a little more, um, add some more flair, update the the cover, whatever. Um, I think I think then now you have a proven asset. It's almost like you can send out the beta really quickly. Maybe your mic isn't as good, but now you know people have raised their hand and said, I like this. Now you have evidence that it's a piece of content that you should, you know, really, that's working for you, I should say. Yeah. And so I think for the most part, like the quick answer, it doesn't matter as much, I think, because the content is really important and people are raising their hands to get it. I, yeah, I really love that because I do think even you know, coming at it from a, as a podcast manager and strategist, I, when I did my private podcast before, I think what I didn't like about them was I was trying to make them too perfect. And mm. I was trying to, I was like writing show notes for them and like getting just like, like totally producing them like I would a normal episode. So I love this idea of it actually allows for a little bit more play with your audio yeah. and your episodes and how you want to present that content. Testing. Yeah, I love that so much mm -hmm. because, you know, with the live stuff, it's hard It's hard to test too much because once it's out there, it's generally out there. I mean, you can replace a file, but still, um, it's not the same. So I do love that concept of, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's more about getting the content to the people. So I know for me, I'm sitting here telling myself as you were talking, like, I need to just jot down the ideas and get them rolling. Like, why haven't I done this yet? I'm a podcaster. I should have a podcast, but that's a whole other episode. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. So if someone is listening to this and they're, they're saying, oh my gosh, I need this. This is exactly the next step for me. What do you suggest as far as starting? I know like we just talked about the audio and just sitting down and recording, but what are kind of some first steps for creating a private podcast? whether it's a lead magnet or it's a, like a supplement for something else, a membership, a course, what would you say would be the place to start? Yeah, I am big on starting with what you already have. Like that is, especially in business, yeah. um, you know, I talked about, we kind of talked about testing out kind of a new idea or something like that. It does take a lot longer as a content creator to build something from scratch. You know, even right. if it is you want to riff, you still have to outline it. You still have to like think about your ideal audience and, you know, the purpose of it in your business. So, so if you have something that's already working, um, we just interviewed somebody, we just launched a public private, sorry, we just launched a public podcast ourselves called Launch Your Private Podcast. And we're, inter yeah, we're interviewing um, users um, and sprinkling when we're probably going to do a couple other styles of episodes um, a little bit later. But for now, we're interviewing users and how, you know, some of their most successful private podcasts are going, getting some behind the scenes on that creation. And, you know, the reality is using something that already exists is going to be the fastest way for you to get something out there. But also you have something proven. So, you know, your audience likes that topic. Right. And we just had somebody on who is like a nutritionist and kind of a habit coach. And she um, basically repurposed one of her popular masterclasses um, all about meal planning. And it was all about how you can on every Sunday meal prep in 20 minutes. And even me and Nora were both like, can we sign up for yeah. this? Like, this is perfect because we know how great audio is. Like if it was a PDF or if it was a video, I wouldn't do it. Right. 
So A, we signed up immediately, but B, she was talking about how, it, yes, it is her most popular lead magnet ever because of both those things, the fact that yeah. it's audio and like, and she goes, I literally repurposed it. I did divide it up. There was points in the workshop that I had done live that broke it up, um, but she goes, I didn't even re-record it yet. And so she's like, I could make it better. I, I did record an intro episode and said, this is taken from a live masterclass that I did. And she goes, yeah, I'm sitting here looking at this on my to-do list, but people are consuming it. It's her highest converting thing. It leads to people in her coaching and her one-on-one coaching. And she's like, why change something that I don't have to change yeah. yet? So that kind of even answers the question you asked prior. So my advice is always to start with something you already have, if that works for you, right? So, um, most of the time, another way to look at this too, that was obviously a lead magnet. Another way to look at this is like, as a business owner, I think recognizing that wowing and blowing the socks off our customers is a really important part of our business, mm -hmm. right? Because when you impress people that have already given you money, they're out there singing your praises. So by adding, just adding a private podcast version of a, of a course or a, a, some sort of offer that you have, while you might not see more money because you did that, the idea that you're giving that to them and your people are going to love that. Yeah. And so even starting with something like that, where it's not a new offer or a new asset, you're literally just supplementing material that is already in the hands of some of your customers is huge. And then you can go back from that and start putting it on the sales page or breaking it out right. as a bonus um, or, or, or charging as an upsell or something like that. Yeah. But I still think, though, if if your ultimate goal as a a business owner, I guess, as a creator is to help your people in some way, you know, holding that back from them just doesn't feel right when you know it's such a great way to consume content yourself. So, yeah, yeah, that's like typically how I would suggest to start is start with something that you already have. So let's say like a, a, a personal question, really. So like I have a membership and I do master classes every month in that membership. Hmm. Would you suggest mm -hmm. like just taking that? masterclass video converting it to audio and just posting it as is like oh, okay 100 percent. okay <laughs> and you could you could i mean you also own a podcast podcast i know production company, i know so yeah could you do a couple edits you could but should even I? if you didn't know <laughs> i mean exactly right yeah. like should you spend the resources when most people are willing to overlook that um you know maybe you could do an intro or an outro um, or something like that, or at the beginning of that feed. So I would suggest a feed specifically for the master classes, so somebody knows that they could go there and listen to it. But yeah, at the beginning, you would just say, these are the live recordings, right? Or I guess it could even be in the description. Yeah. These are the live recordings from the membership. And um, as of right now, we aren't editing them. Um, we do our coaching calls in a feed. We do a coaching call monthly. And um, yeah, a lot of users love it. When I forget to upload something, I'm getting messages about it. Um, yeah. And, you know, we do quick AI summary of timestamps. So nothing even that big of a lift for us as a team right. to be able to just give people the chance. Because, man, I'm going to tell you, man, most people are not going to watch a video replay of something if they can't attend. It's just hard. It's harder to sit down yeah. and get the time to do it. It really is. Yeah. I mean, so. I, I was, yeah, I was talking about that earlier with somebody and I was saying how, you know, the only time I really get to do anything that's not my business is when I'm in the car, right? Like when mm. I'm driving. And so yeah. that's when I listen to podcasts. Like I listened to a podcast this morning on my way home uh, from dropping my kid off at school. But that's, that's when I listen to things. And so it makes so mm -hmm. much sense. I'm thinking about you know, my ideal clients and how they live their lives and what they're doing. And I'm like, yeah, it makes total sense to have all of that in a podcast as opposed to just video. Uh, and also, too, I think, you know, I, we were talking about usability. I was also talking about usability this morning and and the apps and how much easier is it to go to your app and listen to that workshop than it is to go to the place where the workshop is hosted, find the link, where's the email with the link, go to the thing, click log in. Yeah. So it just I can see how it just makes so much sense that if you are offering some kind of course or membership or anything, it just it makes a lot of sense. I'm kind of having a like, why haven't I done this yet moment? I know, right? <laughs> Most people, I'm not going to lie. Um, when we interview people, we've done, you know, testimonials. We have like a success stories podcast. So, again, another great use for yeah. a coach or a consultant or a business owner, like a just uh, we have what 45 episodes of just users That's and how so they're using smart. the product. 
and people can binge it. That's our lead magnet. Yeah. Anyways, one of the almost without fails, they always are like, this is way easier than <laughs> I thought it was going to be. Why didn't I do this sooner? And I think too, like, again, as a business owner who has lots of subscriptions to lots of products and who's released a lot of digital content, you know, a lot of that stuff can get very complicated. Yeah. Kajabi, Thinkific, there's so many steps to releasing a digital product. You guys, releasing a podcast, it's, I also, I like to say it's the way we've created the UI and everything, but it really is just like, it's simple. It's just audio that gets dropped right. into yeah. a thing and you, it, you go and it goes. Well, and, and Hello Audio has made that so simple because we, I have tried yeah. to do private podcasts through other things, uh, none of which I will name here, but I've tried a lot of things to do private podcasts or to do it on my own and manage it. And I will say that mm -hmm. nothing is as easy as Hello Audio to set up a private podcast. And, you know, ah, I appreciate well, that. and I, you know, I am of the believer, like if something is hard, you're not going to do it. Mm. And so if there yeah, is a 100%. tool that will make something just a little bit easier for you, we talk a lot about this in my membership. We talk a lot about the tools we're using because mm. the minute podcasting, I feel like because you do have to sit down and record and the minute podcasting gets hard is the minute people stop doing it. So anything we can simplify and make easy, I think is really, really important. And I think that's what you've done with private podcasts because, I mean, yeah. there's just, like I said, I've tried to host it myself and manage like people signing up. I've tried other platforms, but I just, I think the way that yours is set up is just so user-friendly and it's like a set it and forget it kind of thing. So, which is important. Yeah. I, I'll say this, you know, it was, it's interesting because we launched, you know, in, in 2020, I think Transistor had just released private podcasts two months after I made that original post in 2019. Mm -hmm. So they're out in 2020. And I remember, I, you know, they were what we looked at as we were building. We love, you know, we love how they've made podcasting very simple. But the reality is, again, like I said, they it's built for podcasters. Right. And right. so the whole interface is very different because there's not you know, you're Joe Rogan or whatever. I hate putting him as my example. You're like, whatever, a creator that creates amazing content. And you're not, you're not dropping 50, right. you know, five minute videos in a, in a season because like, that's not how they record. Right. Yeah. And so it's, we've really truly built it for us. And I think as, you know, as we were building and in the grind, you know, Kajabi comes out with private podcasts and we're like, oh no. And my gut was like, oh, the big guys, right? Because we were told, like, you know, why not? Can't somebody else just build right. this? And we always kept going back to, like, well, we built it really for us, right? And even Kajabi and any yeah. other horse platform, you know, they're not a private podcast hosting company. Right. So guess what? You know, they don't accept all MP3 files or all types of files. So you can't upload a voice memo there. Did you guys know that, right? Yeah. The way they set up a lot of their stuff. And it's, you know, because they're a course platform, an all-in-one course platform, which arguably makes it even worse because they keep just adding and adding stuff and they can't really get to the nitty gritty of what people need in all of those things that they do. Yeah. And so while I was scared when they launched, you know, it also a part of me was like, well, it's going to make private podcasting more popular because people will like know it exists. And then they'll be in Kajabi and try to use it. And here they are converting mp4s into mp3 no. so they can put it up and then it's just like oh i'm willing to pay <laughs> yeah. audio because they have they do that for me and and there you go and so yeah i think by us making that our bread and butter really truly makes for a better use of uh, user experience right. because we think about the features that people like me want yeah and that's why again we had to build it i love that so much this has been such an amazing conversation like First of all, I just love that we got kind of a behind the scenes peek of Hello Audio, mm. but I appreciate you sharing your insight on private podcasts. And I would love for you just to share any links um, where people can connect with you and where they can sign up to start their private podcast. Yeah. So just go to helloaudio.fm. Um, that's the best place to, um, you know, get started and sign up. We have a Facebook group if you're kind of like, want to dive in or see how people are using it or want to ask some questions. I think that's our best place for users to, you know, crowdsource information. You know, we just had a post of someone's like, what is your onboarding sequence? Like, oh, yeah. you know, how do you tell your customers about it? Or like that kind of stuff. Um, what's the landing page? How are you talking about it? Do you call it a private podcast? I mean, there's lots of stuff that comes up, but this is, this is a new way to use podcasts. Right. So I think 
you know, even even your listeners or potential listeners or customers might not exactly know. So crowdsourcing information is great. That is in our Facebook community. If you um, search Hello Audio community in Facebook, um, I believe if you go to hello, hello audio dot community with the dot community as the whatever that's called, the URL, um, that should take you directly to the Facebook group. And then um, we're pretty active on Instagram and uh, TikTok. And yeah, if you want our success stories podcast, that's a great example of signing up for a lead magnet and seeing what it's like upon delivery and getting access. And it's a great kind of way so you can see what it's like from a listener's perspective. Um, and so that success stories podcast should probably just be on our, it's on helloaudio.fm, like a landing page or resource, but um, I'll provide the direct link as well that we can put below. Yeah. And we'll put all of those links in the show notes. And Lindsay, thank you so much for coming on the show. This was so great. Of course. Excited and really glad that you brought me on. Thank you so much, Lindsay, again, for coming on the show. That was such a great intro to Private Podcast. And it served as a really good reminder to me that it's something that we can do easily and we can start right away. And I'm definitely going to be applying that and doing that in my own business as well. We will, of course, have all the links in the show notes. But if you ever have any questions about starting a private podcast, be sure to hit me up on Instagram at Wild Home Podcasting. And I'm sure we will be chatting about this in the membership as well, the Strategic Podcast Academy. So be sure to join in on that conversation at strategicpodcastacademy.com. And yeah, let's go forth and create some amazing pieces of audio that not only serve our business and our marketing, but also really help our clients to be able to connect with us in a way that is not on a screen. And I am all for that. Have a great week and I'll be back soon with a new episode. Thank you for listening to Share, Strategize, and Shine. To give your own podcast some shine, download my free podcast guide to creating episodes for sales by heading to the link in the show notes. Be sure to leave a review and connect with me on Instagram for more podcast strategy insights. Until next time.